event. So the floor is yours for the welcoming. Thank you very much, Daniela. Thank you for your effort in organizing this event and helping the municipality of Tuzi. Hello, everyone. From the youngest municipality of Tuzi, it is our pleasure to be part of the project EU for EUs and to be one of the organizers of this event together with our partners from Italy and all around the world. At the first meeting of this project, uh, some of us had the chance to meet each other as well uh, as to talk about the institutions in which we work. As said before, municipality of Tuzi is the youngest municipality in Montenegro, established in 2018 with more than 5,000 inhabitants, and it is the border municipality between Montenegro and the Republic of Albania. When it comes to our municipality, we can say that the migration is something that was following us, uh, us years ago, especially when we talk about uh, our citizens that from our municipality went to uh, on the go. Our diaspora is very numerous in the United States of America, Austria, Switzerland, and many other European countries. We do not have exact data when it comes to our citizens uh, all around the world, but it is, uh, it is, we assume that more than 30% of our people live uh, around the world. Uh, this diaspora is uh, organized in many different countries and it gives contribution to our community to different kinds of activities. Uh, I felt to mention this fact because I believe they had solidarity and tolerance to the places where they went and where they were immigrants, like uh, which is the theme of this project. And we are proud of every person that gave effort for them to feel better in the time they went. All these situations face our municipality with differences in the community that are accepted and that now give the results for one harmonious community. In order for me to be short, I've sent a link to Daniele about one movie from the project Pass for Future that was financed by European Union. So I, you can have some wider picture of municipality of Tuzi because I like it more when I see visually some kind of facts than for me to speak here. Please, Daniela. Yes, just let me uh, start the videos. Should I? Second. Okay, share. Okay, I think that now you you can see and uh, listen, isn't it? Can you hear? Uh, no, Daniele, we cannot. We I don't think we see and I'm sharing now. No. Okay, just let me check again. Uh, Cesare, maybe you can share, try to share the, the video. Wait a second, I put here the videos. Wait a second. I, in the meantime, I share the video in the chat. Okay. Wait, uh, what is it? Okay, now Cesare, my colleague has the privilege to share the videos. Uh, we reached uh, 31 participants, so in the meantime, I'm giving some uh, uh, organizational uh, information. Good, good morning to all. Dani, non ho la possibilità di condividere. Devi darmi well, il privilegio per lo chef. Te l'ho dato. Non mi va. Mi manca questo. Prova. Ok, adesso sì. Mm 
Okay, so we can see it now. Si, inserisco un attimo l'audio. We can see, but uh, we cannot listen. Yes, with WebEx, the video uh, is uh, always sharing videos as well, tr a tricky aspect, but we'll succeed, I'm sure. Still okay. here, we can go more visually. It's not a problem. Okay. Okay, Cesare, condividi anche senza audio. Okay, maybe you can comment, Amra, because I think that uh, is an issue. Uh, it's an issue. Let the sound uh, done. Okay, this is the videos. I think that you can see it. Don't know, Amra, if you want comment. Uh, well, this video was Something. made uh, with the project of Pass for Future. As I said before, the municipality of Tuzi is a really young uh, municipality, but we've deal with the uh, European Union finance pro project since uh, we were urban municipality of Tuzi because we had the chance to be applicants in these projects. We have many projects behind bilateral cooperation, especially with Republic of Albania. And this is now uh, the third project within IPA cross-border cooperation with Italy. This project, Pass for Future, was uh, connected to the goals for promotion of tourism. Uh, we have, uh, there is, a, let's say, a long road in, front of, a road in front of us when it comes to touristic valorization. We consider this uh, this uh, cross-border municipality as very rich in uh, different kinds of uh, touristic uh, areas, such as cultural tourism, re religious tourism. And over here, you can see uh, different spots in municipality of Tuzi. We have a big uh, natural heritage. That's the Semi River. That there was one project uh, before with cross border cooperation with Albania, joint action plan for ecological defense of Semi River. And one of the results of that project was the, the uh, nomination of uh, Sirna River for Monument of Nature. Uh, also, uh, there is a very beautiful landscapes because uh, municipality of Uzi also has mountains, small mountains. Uh, the most famous mountain here in uh, in uh, Tuzi is Dechic. Also, municipality of Tuzi has its own football club, which is named Dechic, and it's very very successful in the football league of Montenegro, holding the second spot in the first league of Montenegro. Uh, some of the pictures here you can see it from the Medun, where you can where you can see a muse museum uh, with all different kinds from history of Tuzi. Uh, as you know, Montenegro and all Balkan countries are connected to Ottoman Empire, so you can see also the details coming from that uh, from that uh, part of history. Uh, as I mentioned before, municipality of Tuzi is very rich uh, when it comes to ethnic differences because it is the minority on the national level. But uh, the citizens, uh, uh, citizens Albanians here in Tuzi are the majority when it comes to local level. Uh, I really, really feel sorry because the video cannot be, uh, let's say, transmitted. But I hope the citizen will have chance uh, later on to. To visit the video and see. Also, we have our Facebook, page, which we update our activities. 
So uh, I hope the attendees will have the opportunity to check our page and uh, looking forward for future cooperation because international cooperation is very important for us. So I hope that uh, you got to catch some information. What I said, I wasn't prepared to talk, but I hope that you could uh, understand things that I was saying. Uh, come on. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for the presentation, for this uh, virtual visit. Uh, I'm sure that all the part participants appreciated uh, the image. Uh, of course, uh, my personal opinion was much better being present in those uh, uh, wonderful place, but unfortunately we have to uh, accept the situation and have a virtual, a virtual visit. Now we hope in the future that we'll be able to uh, visit in person uh, Tulsi and all the beautiful landscape uh, uh, that uh, the territory offered. Uh, just an information, I shared the, the full video uh, link uh, in the chat, so you can also appreciate the music, even if Amra described very well uh, the, uh, the video play. Um, just now, um, I give some moments to present to everybody the Eforeus project uh, in the frame, and this event is organized in the frame of the Eforeus uh, project. Uh, just let me share uh, the, um, the website of the project. Uh, this project, uh, uh, of course, uh, born uh, to do in the in a physical presence so was was uh, originally uh, were scheduled seven events uh, one of these in uh, montenegro and during the which all the uh, international uh, delegates together with the local participants uh, we have uh, about 10 international partners should uh, work together should try to better understand uh, the, the local situation about the immigrants, about the solidarity, about the, in general the situation of uh, refugees uh, in uh, Montenegro. Of course, we had to uh, reschedule uh, all the activity virtually, so we raised the number of the events, not uh, more seven events, but uh, 13 events, so we raised the number to better uh, achieve the um, project expected results. Um, and how you can see in the screen, uh, the, the title of the project uh, describe, best, describe uh, what, what is the aim of the project. We try to um, stress, to focus on those aspects related to the immigrants, the refugees and the, their integration in the in the in the countries involved uh, of course in this uh, difficult periods for every everybody of the pandemia uh, probably the immigration uh, refugees issues uh, is less uh, focused from the media from the percep percep perception of the citizens but these issues is really important because the refugees, uh, the immigrants are the first pe person, the first group, vulnerable groups that mo most than us suffered uh, the um, consequence of, of pandemia. Uh, lack of job, lack of opportunity, more uh, less resources to integrate them, etc. So this is uh, th this event to try to maintain high the tension of the of these issues and one of the um, uh, because this is one uh, of the aim of the project and we try during the during the event as you can see now we have 14 international events uh, we try to uh, tell to describe to uh, to inform uh, the white public about the situation in each country uh, this is not only an event project uh, we organize also interim activities uh, such as uh, uh, survey public survey try to um, aim to target uh, the citizen perception toward the immigration in pandemia uh, times but also we are trying to organize also ex other extra activities like uh, 
virtual videos or interviews uh, uh, directly in the refugee centers. And this is one of the um, activity that uh, probably the, the Montenegrin uh, partners is going uh, are going to 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 do in the next uh, in the next uh, few uh, weeks. So uh, this is an open project where it's important to have the uh, the point of view and uh, um, the presentation from the distinguished uh, speakers that we are uh, we invited. Uh, during the event, but also it's important to have the voice from the citizen, from the participants. So if you have any questions, doubts, uh, uh, curiosity, uh, uh, you are welcome and you can interact with us uh, with the chat, the web uh, chat. So I invite you uh, to put your question or curiosity yeah. or uh, anything that you want to uh, analyze uh, better or better understand uh, writing directly in the web chat uh, uh, in the webex uh, chat um, so just let me uh, share uh, briefly the agenda so i can also uh, introduce uh, um, the speakers yeah uh, the first one was Amra Pepic. I am Daniel Egizzi, the project manager of the Focus Europe. And now I am, I am I'm very pleased. I want to really thank uh, Amra and uh, the municipality of Tuzi for their great organization. All the speakers invited that uh, accepted to be uh, with us uh, uh, today, and also all the participants that uh, are a quite number of 35 participants uh, is uh, a very good number in our opinion even because uh, the, the the priority in this period uh, probably are different each of us are uh, busy to try to face the effect and mitigate the uh, uh, action of pandemia in our respectively uh, fields of work so thank you very much to all the speakers to be here with us and also thank you very much to all the participants so now just introduce Daniela Marciepovic. Sorry, if, I don't know if the um, pronunciation is uh, right. Uh, that present us the legal and institutional framework for migration in Montenegro. And now I'm going to give her the privilege to share the screen. Just let me a second. Uh, Okay, a second. Uh, Daniela. Okay, Daniela, now you are you are presenter and you can share your presentation uh, just clicking on share contents at the bottom of the page. Uh, on the left of perfect. Great. You can put the presentation mode with F5. Clicking five. Okay, great. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, we, we can see your presentation, but we cannot hear you. Now I'll give you the. Okay. Daniela. You, you can speak. We cannot hear you, Daniela. Daniela, on the bottom, you have the mute and unmute button for your microphone next to the button from stopping the video. Maybe you're muted. Or if you have trouble, you can also call me on my phone so we can try to handle it well. Hello. Hello. Is it okay now? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Thank you. Uh, well, good day to everyone. Uh, my name is Daniela Marcijepovic. I'm an uh, independent advisor in the Directorate for Administrative Affairs, Citizenship and Foreigners. 
First of all, I would like to thank you, Ambra Pepic, for uh, inviting me to be a speaker on today's event. And thank you, Daniela, for hosting this uh, meeting. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to share with you some of uh, good uh, practice in the migration policy in the Montenegro. So let me start my presentation. First of all, uh, appreciating uh, can we, uh, appreciating the importance of migration policy in uh, issues and the impact that these trends have on security, political stability and demographic growth and other social factors, we express our gratitude to be a part of today's event. So Montenegro uh, in the previous period has uh, continuously implemented some activities related to improving conditions in the field of migration. By that we mean on legal migration, combating illegal migration, promoting the value of international protection, full integration of persons with international protection, as well as uh, all issues related to readmission procedures and reintegration of returnees upon this procedure. All this on the platform of uh, intensive regional and uh, international cooperation and harmonization with the acquis and best practices from the EU member states. Uh, so I will use this opportunity to look back at some activities that our ministry made in the recent years to establish a well-efficient normative and uh, institutional structure that will adequately respond to the, all the challenges that uh, massive influx of migrants can, can bring. We will start with the legal framework for migration policy and uh, from the Constitution of Montenegro. Uh, it, uh, in Article 44, it stipulates that a uh, foreigner who has a well-founded fear of, of prosecution because of his uh, race, language, religion or belonging to a national group or because of his political beliefs may seek asylum in Montenegro and he or she cannot be expelled from Montenegro where because of his race, religion, political beliefs, nationality is uh, threatened with a death penalty, torture, inhuman humiliation, persecution or serious violation of the basic human rights. In the article number nine, uh, Constitution of Montenegro prescribes the primacy of uh, ratified international treaties among the national legislation. And this, uh, we all know that this constitutional provision means that um, obliges all national institutions to apply these uh, ratified international treaties directly when they regulate a situation differently from the national legislation. Among the Constitution of Montenegro and uh, international uh, ratified treaties, uh, the most important laws uh, in the era of uh, migration are uh, law on foreigners. It is our new law on foreigners that entered into force in uh, March 2018. Uh, it regulates the conditions for entry, exit, movement, stay and work of foreigners in Montenegro. Second one is the law on international and temporary protection. Uh, also the new law that entered, uh, entered into force in uh, January 2018. Uh, this law implements the standards of international humanitarian law and human rights standards in the development and implementation of reception policy. And there is a need to create a safe and dignified environment for all people seeking international protection. Uh, this law recognizes the need to establish and uh, apply fair and expeditious international pro protection procedures so that, uh, those who, uh, so that those who uh, need international protection and those for whom this is not the case are identified in a timely manner. Uh, the novelty in this law it, is that uh, it defines the following institutions, institutes of uh, EU legislation, such as acts of persecution, perpetrators of persecution, reasons for exclusion, safe country of origin, safe third country, safe uh, a secure European third country, and the border procedure. Uh, regarding uh, institutional framework, uh, Minister of Interior of Montenegro is in charge for migration policy in Montenegro, uh, and within it, the Director of uh, administrative, uh, administrative Affairs, Citizenship and uh, Foreigners. Is it... Can we hear? Yeah, okay. Thank uh -huh. you. Is, is it okay? Thank, thank uh, you. So, 
Can I, continue? Can I continue? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, please go. Please. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. I have a, a problem with the microphone here. Uh, so uh, re regarding the institutional framework, uh, we said that the Ministry of Interior is in charge for uh, migration policy, and within the Ministry, uh, Director for Administrative Affairs, Citizenship, and Foreigners. Within that directorate, we have four sections, so uh, you can call it also directorate, that are dealing with migration issues. Uh, directorate for Foreigners, Migration and Readmission, where I work. A Zion Directorate, Directorate for the Reception of Foreigners Seeking International Protection. Directorate for Integration of Foreigners with Approved International Protection and Reintegration of Returnees upon Readmission. Also, the not to, uh, to mention police directorate and uh, the work of Ministry of Interior is supported by a uh, multifunctional team consisting of uh, representatives from uh, international organizations such as UNHCR, uh, EOM, UNICEF, uh, Frontex, EASO, uh, all with the cooperation with the NGOs, uh, Civic Alliance, uh, uh, Legal uh, Center and not to forget to mention uh, cooperation with the Red Cross of Montenegro. Uh, we're all familiar with the fact that uh, migrant crisis hit Europe and uh, escalated in 2015 in the form of massive influx of uh, refugees and illegal migrants from Asia, Africa and uh, Middle East to the countries of EU. Uh, due to the escalation of this migrant crisis and uh, with the aim to a timely response uh, in migration management, uh, government of Montenegro uh, in the November 2015, with the conclusion, adopted the action plan in case of mass influx of migrants and the refugees. Also, the same session, a coordination and operational team were formed that uh, will coordinate the activities of state bodies uh, on the implementation of the, of the mentioned action plan. Um, when it comes to resolving the status of uh, displaced persons and internally displaced persons, we know that these persons come from a region that are affected by the war in the previous years. And uh, by status, we mean on uh, granting uh, permanent and uh, temporary residence uh, up to three years to these persons. And uh, it should be noted that uh, an exceptional result was made in this regard, in the sense that in January 2015, there were a total of uh, 2,969 uh, requests for resolving their status. In January 2017, there were a total of 629 requests, while on, till the end of uh, 20, uh, 2020, there were a total of 140 requests. Still some statistics, uh, some statistics uh, in this area uh, from 2009 where uh, law on foreigners entered into force. Ending on December 2020, displaced persons and internally displaced persons submitted a total of 15,251 applications. Out of this number, 15,111 uh, requests have been resolved, while, as we mentioned before, 104 requests are still in progress. And it's about 1% of these requests are still pending, and uh, they will be resolved by 2023. Uh, according with the law on foreigners from 2018, where um, statusless determination procedure was adopted, it is very important to mention that we uh, issued the seven travel documents and four temporary residence permit to a stateless person in Montenegro while the procedure for determining statelessness is ongoing for 14 persons. Uh, readmission procedure is another one pillar in the migration policy. Readmission is the act of state uh, accepting the re-entry of an individual. It can be our own national, third country national or uh, stateless person who has been found to have entered, been present or resided illegally on the territory of another country. So, readmission agreements are an uh, important issues, uh, are an important policy instrument for the return of migrants and asylum seekers from EU member states. And these agreements uh, define the uh, obligation of signatory states to readmit their own citizens, stateless person, or third country national. 
We signed an admission agreement with the most country of uh, EU, uh, also with the uh, Kingdom of Norway, Swiss Confederation, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Albania, Croatia, Serbia, Macedonia, Kosovo, and Moldova. Um, here we have some uh, readmission statistics on the number of uh, readmission requests that we um, received. And as you can see, it is constantly uh, decreasing. Asylum. Uh, Asylum uh, is uh, under the authority of Asylum Directorate. According with the law on international temporary protection of foreigners, uh, an asylum seeker is an alien who has been granted asylum in accordance with the law on, or, yeah, in accordance with the mentioned law, uh, as well as an alien who has been granted refugee status in accordance with the previous law that was the law on asylum. An alien under subsidiary protection is a third country national uh, and a stateless person who has been granted subsidiary protection. Uh, so, from the uh, establishment of the uh, asylum, uh, international protection, uh, uh, international protection system in Montenegro, uh, in uh, 2007 till uh, October 2020, uh, 15,937 applications for international protections were submitted in Montenegro. Uh, the, the largest uh, out of this number, 84 protections have been granted, uh, 52 are, are asylum seekers, uh, and 32 are granted subsidiary protections. The largest number of asylum seekers come from Syria and Iran, and when it comes to persons with approved subsidiary protection, the largest number also comes from Syria and calling by Belarus. Uh, Directorate for uh, the reception of uh, foreigners seeking international protection is in charge for the accommodation of foreigners seeking international protection. Uh, and uh, we have a capacity of 104 places in the reception center in, in Spurge and um, 60 places in the reception center in Boje. In the situation where these capacities are full, Alternative accommodations uh, are engaged in uh, Vrela Rivnička in Podgorica, but uh, they are mostly uh, accommodating uh, adult men. Uh, the Ministry of Interior uh, has undertaken activities to create conditions for the reconstruction of the existing facility of the reception center in Spurge uh, by upgrading the mezzanine attic and uh, expanding the dimensions of the restaurants. And these activities will increase accommodation capacity by 60 places plus 104 places. Um, activities to increase accommodation capacities are also aimed at the reconstruction of the Watchtower in Boje. And uh, in this, uh, in regular circumstances, accommodation will be provided for 120 people and in extraordinary for 200 people. Uh, we have some uh, statistics on the number of persons that admitted for admission for reception, and uh, we can see that it's a great increase, and this trend will be following in the next period. Uh, the last directorate in our ministry uh, for uh, integration of foreigners with approved international protection and reintegration of returnees upon readmission, it's a quite bit large uh, name, uh, is responsible for accommodating foreigners granted international protection and assistance in integration in society, in Montenegrin society, uh, coordination in uh, exercising the rights prescribed by law, also, uh, also providing support for inclusion in social, economic, cultural life, uh, assistance in the reintegration of returnees upon readmission, uh, implementation of national, regional, international documents for resolving refugee status. Uh, in 2018, accommodation and assistance uh, in integration was provided for 10 people, in 2019 for 12 people, and um, these persons are provided uh, with assistance in uh, exercising the rights prescribed by law, financial assistance, right to material assistance, registration in the Labor Bureau, professional training and uh, gaining uh, practical work experience, registration with the competent health insur insurance, 
uh, enrollment in appropriate education institutions, learning the Montenegrin language, culture, history, etc. Um, what should be done in the future? So it is very important to strengthen capacity to manage mixed migration flows and uh, to develop triage systems for special categories of persons in the context of uh, mixed migration so that all persons are referred to appropriate procedures. Uh, we need to increase human and material resources dedicated to border management and the system of uh, registration of refugees and migrants. Also, uh, we need more better technical equipment, but also better cooperation and uh, coordination between all key actors in the migration system in order to ensure the uh, development of an integrated migration system. So, uh, by establishing a normative framework and uh, as well as institutional structures, uh, Montenegro has, been, has, built, has built an efficient migration management system, system with the future goal to strengthen this uh, mechanism. But, uh, however, no matter how developed a national migration system is, uh, it cannot tackle the, prob uh, the problem of um, illegal migration, especially on its own, without continuous cooperation with the countries in the region, with the EU and international organizations and all other entities that can contribute to more efficient uh, management system. Uh, this is a very complex theme, so I try to be more specific as I can, and thank you for listening and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much indeed for your presentation. Uh, just uh, the, um, there is a question so, uh, you uh, mentioned in your presentation about that most of the refugees you have in Montenegro came from Syria, Iran, and Belarus. And what about the um, uh, refugees from Africa? Uh, probably uh, yes, Montenegro. It's not a route uh, where the probably Africans arrived, I don't know. Yes, uh, there are also persons from Morocco and uh, Al Algier, uh, besides uh, Syria and uh, Iran. Also, we, we, but the most people come from Syria and Iran that are seeking international protection in Montenegro. Okay. But if you need a number from uh, the persons coming from the Africa, I could obtain them and I will send to you. Yes, could be interesting, even because uh, um, several partners uh, of Eforeus uh, mm -hmm. are Mediterranean uh, partners that uh, have um, several refugees from uh, Africa, especially Italy, but also Greece, uh, Spain. Uh, so it could be also interesting to uh, understand uh, the, the number or the, the, the entity of the refugees from uh, Africa, even because in the uh, media, uh, the African refugees uh, looks are, are, are ha, ha, have a uh, um, huge impact uh, in, our, in our in in the um, among the citizens' perception. Probably because uh, uh, I don't know why actually, but uh, it could be also interesting to understand uh, the nature and the entity of the refugees from Africa. In Montenegro also. Yes, I could obtain more details and I will send to you. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you very much indeed. So if there are any other questions or I wrote uh, in the chat, you can just uh, put uh, write down uh, and uh, I can report to the speakers. Uh, thank you again. Uh, thank you again for your presentation, uh, Daniela. I'm going now to give the floor to Bojana Tomovic from the International Organization for Migration Montenegro. Just give me a second to give you the privilege to share your screen and your presentation. Okay, you should have it now. Okay, I will try sharing now. Okay. You can see it, right? Yeah. You hear me? Great. Okay. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. I, I would like to thank to the organizer, the fellow panelists and the participants.
Thank and you. for giving us the opportunity to join you and to talk at the today's event. Um, I will build up on what Daniela has extensively and very well presented about the national framework in Montenegro and kind of touched upon on some more global level and some activities that IOM office in Montenegro has been involved uh, recently. So the first thing I kind of wanted always to, to take a few minutes to consider is who do we consider being a migrant and what does migration mean to us? As Danielle has previously mentioned, like migration discourse and narrative in media is usually shaped by certain categories of migrants or uh, certain issues. But do we all like when we think about a migrant, is it a barefoot person or a person with a briefcase? Is it a female or a male person? Is it someone coming from Afghanistan or someone coming from US? It is always important from our side to consider those things in private life, in professional life, when uh, talking about things and when designing policies in order to leave no one behind and in order for our activities and policies to not exacerbate someone's vulnerability or make someone vulnerable because per definition, not all of the migrants are vulnerable per se. So I will share here the IOM 2019 glossaries on migration, the definition of a migrant. As we know, there is no umbrella term under international law for migrant. Migrants are people who move away from their usual place of residence within or across the border temporarily or permanently and for a variety of reasons. So here we include both the people, for instance, seeking international protection or uh, persons moving away, being smuggled to, to find better life somewhere, but also international students, businessmen traveling and living in New York and etc. And therefore, the migration as such is defined as the movement of persons away from their pre usual place of residence within or again across the country. Um, I wanted to touch here a bit about the concept of global migration governments, because as we all know, there is no international treaty uh, regulating migration, and therefore there is not one agency task only with migration related issues. But we do still have some uh, requirements, some norms, rule, principles, and definitely decision making that regulates the behavior of states in the areas of migration, as Alexander Betts uh, puts it and uh, well defines it. So in that sense, I could touch upon on the international human rights only briefly to kind of highlight that human rights of everyone are protected within certain generic human rights instrument, but also of certain categories. And migrants as human beings are also protected and their rights are protected by these instruments. Uh, also, some of the specific uh, instruments targeting certain categories also have provisions such as uh, anti-discrimination based on nationality or, or ethnic background or et cetera. We do have a 1990 International Convention for the Protection of the Rights of All Migrant Workers and Members of Their Families. However, it remains the mostly uh, unratified convention. And as we know, the Montenegro is a signatory state, but it has not ratified this convention. So I wouldn't go in more detail on, on this. The global uh, migrant governance, even though uh, contains this global um, adjective to it. It also refers to the regional mechanisms that are there to regulate certain issues or certain categories uh, that we talk about. So, for instance, we have the European Convention on Human Rights. Also, uh, we should not um, make it less important the regional free movement of people, such as the EU, or if we take into consideration the discussion that have been led by RCC here on the Western Balkans. And of course, as Daniela has extensively well uh, described the national level from the constitution, but also towards the, the local level, which again brings us into the scope of this project that also is kind of locally uh, centered. Uh, when it comes to actors, again, important thing to mention is from the international level where we have IOM, UN agencies, uh, ICMPD, and et cetera, to regional organizations, 
EU, Council of Europe, Frontex, and etc. But also very important sometimes undermine the, the importance of the human rights committees or courts, such as European Court of Human Rights, which had some really great um, judgments in the areas of private and personal life that kind of shaped the interpretation of some regional and also in the other cases, international uh, treaty bodies. But uh, it should not be undermined the importance of business organizations, universities, migrant organizations, and definitely local communities, especially when we talk about issues such as social cohesion, integration, uh, and etc. cetera. Uh, one thing, again, that kind of sometimes is forgotten is the importance of soft law. Uh, which includes all of those guidances and all of those pacts, some compacts in this case, uh, that show the political will of governments to work towards certain goals, um, but are not legally blinding. One of those being 2030 UN Agenda for Sustainable Development that does not include one goal uh, regarding migration per se, but migration is mainstream towards the, uh, within the whole uh, documents and all of the goals and one for us important is the global compact for safe orderly and regular migration uh, that was adopted in 2018 by majority of u.s states including montenegro and it is the first intergovernmentally negotiated agreement prepared within u.n that covers all dimension uh, dimensions of migration and hence it is not legally binding it has 23 objectives that deal with different issues, for instance, strengthening the data and data exchange, counter trafficking and smuggling, supporting um, social, uh, strengthening social cohesion on the local and national level and partnerships and corporations and, and et cetera. Uh, when it comes to role of IOM within this global governance, I will just briefly touch upon, I mean, IOM has been worked, uh, working on the issues in the areas of migration um, since 1951. It is dedicated to promoting human and orderly migration for the benefit of all, and it does this by providing services and advices to, govern, uh, uh, to governments and migrants supports the um, governments in orderly and humane management of migration, promotes international cooperation, assists search for practical, practical solutions to migration challenges, and provides in, uh, humanitarian assistance where needed. This is just a brief overview of the um, uh, mixed migration flows to Montenegro for the period 2019 to 2021. Uh, approximately 11,000 new arrivals were recorded in this period. As you can see from 2020, we had um, a high decrease in the influx, which has many factors, but one of, one of them being the COVID-19 pandemic. As you can see, the drop starts approximately in March once the governments everywhere in the world introduce their policy responses to pandemic, but also we individually feel some um, effects uh, from the uncertainty and, and everything else related to the COVID. As you can see, Montenegro experienced mostly the influx of uh, male uh, new arrivals. There were some of obviously female and, and children. And as you can see, there are certain spikes within each year as in the few months we experience more arrivals than in other as regards to the nationality breakdown as you can see here is by the years overall most of new arrivals came from morocco syria algeria afghanistan and iraq however as you can see that changes uh, with each year, um, some of the nationalities are more prominent than uh, than others uh, it is kind of unfair now to say uh, what are what is the forecast for the forthcoming period. We still are within the pandemic. Uh, the policy responses to the pandemic still remain, and it depends uh, what we are going to 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 uh, expect. But I believe there will be some uh, some shifts uh, in once the vaccination starts, once the world starts in a sense, coming back to, to normal.
uh, when it comes to IOM's activities in Montenegro, just briefly, I will go through some that were really prominent in the last year. As Daniela mentioned, the uh, Reception Center for Foreign and Seeking International Protection at Karola Boja was established in 2020. IOM has since 2018 worked on supporting the relevant government authorities in uh, procurement of prefabricated containers, refurbishment of existing premises, supporting the provision of wash services, and et cetera. And uh, on daily basis, it supports the relevant authorities in the distribution of food, non-food items, uh, PPE um, equipment and supplies uh, during this uh, pandemic times. And also our mobile teams include doctors, medical workers, social workers, cultural mediators, and etc. who again support the capacities of the government to provide adequate assistance to our beneficiaries. One of the important things also that we do is the outreach for the assisted voluntary return and reintegration. Here you can see some details about the Western Balkans and the number of cases of successful AVRR activities that we did uh, from 2016 onwards. Uh, as regards to Montenegro, we successfully realized the voluntary return of approximately 100 persons back to their countries of origin. And this program is fully um, based on the informed consent of our beneficiaries to return back to their countries of origin. And they are supported with some mini grants uh, once they return to facilitate their um, reintegration in the countries of origin. Another thing that is again uh, in line with uh, some of your initiatives is the strengthening of social cohesion in Montenegro. In the last months, we have been partnering with four civil society organizations on local level, such as Podgorica, Tuzi, Spuj, Plevlja, in order to increase strengthening, uh, to, to strengthen the social cohesion on the local level among migrant and local populations, also to work on the increase of well-being of both migrants and uh, staff working with them, um, and then campaigning at local level in preventing smuggling of migrants and raising some issues as regards to that. Uh, that is pretty much uh, everything from my side. In case you have any questions, please do ask, or here's my contact in, it, in case you need anything. And here are some resources in case you would like to find out more about what I have been talking about. Thank you once again for the invite. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Boyana, for your presentation. Uh, just, uh, your, um, it would be really interesting uh, also involve uh, your organization together with the other invited during this evening, even in other uh, project proposal uh, targeting the immigrants or refugees. Uh, I don't know what is your policy, the, the policy of your organization uh, uh, for what this uh, proposal, but in case uh, we are the chance to involve you in uh, other project, uh, you are the welcome because uh, we see that you're uh, re is really interesting uh, uh, and is uh, really important for us at uh, so long experience organization in the project that can bring uh, uh, Good, good practices, but also great, ex great ex experience. Yeah, sure. Please reach out in case you have any ideas or in case you want to partner up in, in anything, and then we will we will see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I don't see for the moment uh, any question. Uh, so I can uh, introduce uh, the um, uh, Alexandra Vukcevic. Pro NGO Civic Alliance. Uh, just give me a second to give you the privilege. Okay, you are now presenter and you can uh, okay. share your screen. Just a second. Wait, wait. Um, okay. Just tell me if you are seeing it. Yeah, yeah, I can see you and see this. Okay, like this. 
Okay, thank you very much. I would like to thank you for the invitation to be part of this event and for the opportunity to present our work in the field of asylum and migration. So, uh, Civic Alliance is a non-governmental organization that has been providing free legal aid to the asylum seekers in Montenegro, persons under international and subsidiary protection since January 2019. Uh, we are implementing this project with the support of the UNHCR office here in Podgorica and uh, in a team composed of lawyers, field workers and translation, translators for the Arabic language. So, as I stated, our service users are primarily persons who are seeking asylum in Montenegro and then th those persons who are actually granted either international or subsidiary protection. Um, our field worker, our field workers go on a daily tour of the field visits where they usually work with refugees, but also with the migrants who only pass through our country without seeking asylum. But Montenegro will be their transit route on the way to Europe. So during the first year of the, our project, we were able to be present in the those in the camps in Spurge and in Konik every day. So every day we have looked for the new people who came there and we were in the possibility to explain them immediately in detail which are their rights and their obligations while, while they are staying in Montenegro, which are the proced procedures for granting international protection and so on. Uh, lawyers are the ones who represent uh, the asylum seekers uh, before, uh, before the direction, direction of asylum. So after applying for an asylum, our lawyers uh, conduct three preparatory, preparatory interview, interviews with them before the interview itself. So they discuss more in detail which are the reasons why they did left their country, but also uh, what were their transit route and they prepared them for the main interview before the direct asylum directorate. Uh, we also work with persons who have already been granted uh, international protection in the process of exercising their rights prescribed by the law. Uh, they are, as you may see, there are various legal services that Civic Alliance team provided to our, to our users. In addition to the representation, representation before the asylum directorate, which can be, I can say, considered as the most important one. There are also services of access to the right of, to accommodation, education, social rights, healthcare, but also we, we, were working, we, we wrote lawsuits and some various submissions in order to enable these people to exercise their legal rights. Um, as for the statistics and the number of people to whom we have pro provided some kind of legal assistance on this slide, you may see separately how they are set it up. In particular, I would like to point out the fact that the number of provided services or information has exceeded 14,000 since the beginning of the 2019 years. So uh, in this number, this number actually means the number of services and information provided. All, uh, for example, for one person to receive the more information and more services depends how long they have been staying in Montenegro. The previous year was especially challenging for us because the closure of the camps they also reduced our ability to work in the field. But we also managed to overcome that and reach all those who actually needed legal assistance. This year, we also continue to work with the same project in the hope that all those who really are interested in obtaining asylum in Montenegro with our help will succeed. We also, we also uh, work uh, with the Red Cross as they're also partners with uh, UNHCR. So they, their case field workers are also presented in the field with ours uh, every day and their uh, their representatives who work with the people who received asylum also communicated and work directly with our lawyers. So uh, that's what that would be like our short short presentation of our activities. Uh, for any additional questions, any comments, uh, I'm free and I'm here. So thank you all for the attention. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, um, there is a question that uh, each of you can reply briefly. Um, since that uh, you work uh, in the field of refugees and immig immigrants, uh, also from the 
in, from an institutional and civil society uh, side. Uh, what is, uh, of course, uh, uh, your reply uh, should not be a scientific uh, um, answer, but what is the Montenegrin uh, citizens' perception towards the the immigration or refugees are they accepted they are sceptics uh, they are against mm -hmm. just you can reply in one two minutes uh, each of mm -hmm. you well uh, at the very beginning of this project when i just started working with it i may say that the comments were not so that much positive because the people from montenegro they didn't have uh, too much information about who migrants and who refugees were, because uh, when they entered Montenegro, they were directly, they directly, for example, went to the camps. So you you could not see them, you could not see them through through Podgorica. But there are some places in Montenegro, like exit points, where they can be seen very often. And so, for example, here people in Podgorica, they usually, they usually. Uh, um, read some comments on the social media some uh, some fake news like and uh, regarding that they made they have made some very de their own opinions which were not too much positive actually but we are trying really to to talk about this topic uh, as much as we can uh, to invite media as a journalist to make uh, some stories uh, regarding the the asylum seekers so in that way we can maybe change their minds somehow Thank you. Uh, I don't know if uh, Boyana and Amra can uh, want to reply. Uh, so have they give us their point of view? I mean, sure. Uh, it's it's again a complex question, uh, as everywhere. In a sense, we we also have to consider that uh, Montenegro experienced large influx of people like during the 90s, although they were from the region. Like uh, it is, it is a region that is kind of uh, experienced with having foreigners fleeing throughout their borders and being welcoming in in some sense. So I, I believe that in a sense that remain what here is important and as Alexandra was saying is to work on, you know, kind of uh, enhan enhancing capacities of media in order to um, share the news in a sense that are more um, inclusive that are um not very narrow but that express some kind of like an open perspective to it it is important to also familiarize the the local uh population with migrants uh and asylum seeker refugees who are a part of the community because as we know the very best way in order to enhance the social cohesion and integration is from the local level because there is where the interactions happen and etc of course it is important to have a well-established national framework and that the, on the national level things are done but in sense of the social cohesion and integration the local level is very important and what municipalities do but also how the partners and civil society organizations help and the ways the migrants refugees and other categories are included in 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 the communities on the local level. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't know, Amra, if you want your point of view from the municipality. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, I first of all, I'm really happy that we had such a good speakers and such a, such a good information when it comes to Montenegro. But when it comes to municipalities. Uh, and the uh, law that are establishing municipalities, we cannot say that uh, we have a direct uh, direct jurisdictions towards migration policies. But of course, I agree with Boyana. Uh, it is very very important uh, to make impact locally. Uh, this is the first project of municipality of Tuzi with the thematic area of migration. And uh, while we were all giving our words here on this meeting, I saw just a great idea for future projects uh, when it comes to raising awareness of uh, towards uh, migrants. Uh, this uh, meeting gave me, let's say, a perfect structure of partners which could, which could be included in this kind of project. 
And uh, I just wanted to mention also that one of the, let's say, first steps that can be done in this field is the idea you and you, Daniel, and me mentioned before for our municipality to make a movie or some kind of short uh, movie inter with interviews. Uh, that would be the first step. And uh, I'm already in communication with uh, Ms. Ivana, which is in charge within the Ministry of Interior. Uh, also, uh, this is the good connection with the uh, with the uh, Bojai uh, Bojai Center that was mentioned by the by uh, Boyana. Uh, we were planning to make some movies within that center and to have interviews with the migrants, and I'm sure that that will uh, be uh, visualized through our social media, and that would uh, for sure make impact. So I hope in future that we can have. Uh, projects in the future, but, uh, but as Boena said, uh, it, it is really important to say that Montenegro is a country already had before uh, in the past uh, some experiences with uh, migration and when it comes to people from here, here from Tuzi, you remember we already have that surveys uh, which uh, were uh, which were applied by the citizens from municipality of Tuzi, but I really feel that the different difference and the diversity in the local community gives uh, positive results towards the the attitude uh, about migration so i hope just to, to go go in some projects with this this thematic area when it comes to local level okay thank you very much amra we have two questions so one is i think is directly from um, montenegro and one what are our efforts i consider the efforts from the local authorities or regional national authorities about inclusion of local migrants uh, say that a chinese minority in tuzi instead of just focusing on the last wave of uh, migration these are issues that are raised also in our country or i think all the countries more or less faced the same uh, uh, the same uh, problems um, because usually the refugees that arrive especially in italy in greece in malta montenegro in albania they don't want to really stay here but they want to go into the north uh, northern countries uh, sweden germany france uh, uh, france uh, etc so this is the first question. I don't know if uh, Amra or someone else wants to reply or have the their idea of what it could be do for that. Uh, Daniela, uh, so that is that the question that was sent only to you or to? Uh, or... Is is in chat? Uh, is in the chat? Is that question part... from from uh, Dorantina? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, I'm very happy because Dorantina municipality of Tuzi, so I'm using this opportunity to tell her thank you, Dorotina, for following us. I'm really happy that you're from our municipality of Tuzi. And I just wanted to tell her that this is just the start and to do any kind of activities with the municipality of Tuzi. Signs that the information was yeah. bad, or you yeah. hear me what I said? Okay, no, about your questions that uh, we were mentioning the time, the Chinese minority here in Tuzi. Well, we can say that migration of Chinese uh, population was uh, happened many before even I came here. So, uh, to be sincere, I don't know what was uh, the local, uh, what were the local activities when it comes to Chinese ma Chinese minority here in Tuzi. I can say that, that say that they have their own businesses here, and that we are very proud of them to be the part of our society. Uh, the communication between the municipality of Tuzi and Chinese embassy it was very good since uh, the beginning. We had also donation from them. It was the Fire, fire truck vehicle that was used for uh, water, and uh, it was also connected to the place they work here, local market in Tuzi, and we, we made that kind of connection with uh, our local community and Chinese embassy. Uh, I cannot tell a lot about what were the activities of the local uh, authorities uh, in, in that time. 
I just uh, can talk from the aspect of uh, today's uh, activities of our municipality. I'm here for eight years now. So, uh, as I said, Dorantina, this is in the field of migration and uh, me as the head of office for international cooperation will uh, for sure uh, plan to do more activities in this field. And we will, of course, include all people here that uh, that are living in Tuzi with no difference. If you Thank have you. any more questions about this, please write. Thank you. Uh, another uh, questions uh, regarding the, um, I, I, I think that the, probably the representative from ministry were the more suitable person to uh, reply, but I don't know even if you have uh, any perception or knowledge about that, about the, uh, the of course, uh, this is a problem that faced uh, and emerged in, in wherever uh, is the problem that I'm going to introduce is the condition of the refugees in the um, refugee center. Of course, uh, we know that uh, too often, even in Italy, uh, the, um, the, the refugee centers are overcrowded uh, and uh, also the, the operators are overwhelmed uh, by the present. And I don't know if uh, th this is the, um, the question is specific on a uh, specific uh, center of Sputz. I don't know if I, I well pronounced. In I don't know you have any knowledge about that so maybe I could jump in on that question if for for a second. Well okay. um the situation currently is that there are not as many stranded migrants in Montenegro, meaning that they don't uh, go beyond the capacities that the government is is able to provide. Uh, before, like during the 2019, there was some issues as regards to capacities when the government was using the alternative accommodation that Daniela mentioned that was at Rala Ribenica. However, one of the solutions that together the government in support of IOM and with the uh, with the funds uh, by different EU um, funds was able to to find was the establishment of this um, a reception center at Karaula Bojai that currently has some 60 um, uh, accommodation uh, capacities. So at the moment with the current influx, there is no uh, there is no issues as regards to that. When it comes to other services, again, the government has been increasing its capacities and IOM has been supporting with its donor uh, that. So, for instance, as I mentioned, we have mobile teams that are present in the centers of approximately 20 people that include the medical workers, the migrant assistants and cultural mediators, interpreters, and also the UNHCR and uh, with its partners is also present in the field. So there is the improvement of the of the services and uh, as regards to accommodation at this point, uh, it is not a challenge. However, if the numbers would come to some of 2019, etc. Uh, there are some contingencies in place, but of course, uh, there is that depends also on the route and how active it will be and uh, how many people will actually stay in the country for longer. And from the point of view of our our lawyers and uh, again generally NGO sector who is who was also visiting those camps, I may confirm these uh, these stories uh, because uh, generally the most refugees that we talk to are are really satisfied with the, with the conditions in the camps. Beso bes even beside accommodation, they they have uh, they have access to the medical help. help. They have a uh, regular food that they receive over there and there are other activities that, that have been that are being organized so yeah we can say that it's not private and that, that their, their beneficiaries are satisfied okay thank you very much uh i don't see any other questions in the chat so i think uh, we are going to close our event 
just before to close, uh, I remember, first of all, thank you very much indeed again for the great organization and the great presentation and also for the uh, uh, really, really interesting uh, and the clear uh, debated, uh, debated. Um, uh, uh, I just want, uh, would like to show you before to close uh, the, um, the forthcoming events of the Eforeus, uh, of course, uh, AMRA. And before I'm going to present the next uh, events, and then I give the floor to AMRA to the closing uh, remarks. Just let me a second so I can share my screen uh, some events of the a4s are already scheduled other are going to be set up uh, i'm going to sh sh share the screen okay uh, you can see that uh, well the, this is the fifth the fifth event uh, in uh, tusi montenegro the event originally scheduled in albania should be uh, took place yesterday but uh, in force of the uh, force mayor was postponed to 11th uh, of march uh, fortunately uh, the force major uh, was related to the uh, covid issues that affected the uh, hard way uh, also our project uh, and also other partners of the project then uh, the okay well the um, the, the next for the forthcoming event uh, will take place in Greece on 9 of March then we'll have on 11 of March the event in Albania and then on the 25 of March the event in Bulgaria uh, and then we have other event already scheduled, but for the moment we don't have uh, uh, yet the set the date uh, because we are going, we are concentrating on the event of March. But you can see all the updated information on the a4else.org, the, the website of the project, also the Facebook. Uh, we have also a Facebook page, an Instagram page, and uh, of course in the uh, you can find also information on the Focus Europe. Uh, um, uh, website and and on the focus you on on the website and social media of all the hosting organizations so this is the are the next uh, um, uh, scheduled events and uh, I'm all, this is an an open invite to everybody to join our event also to understand the situation in Greece in, in other countries uh, like Greece Albania uh, Bulgaria, etc. Uh, from my side is all uh, is uh, really uh, everything from me. I give now the floor to Amra uh, for the from to um, in spite of Tuzi for the uh, closing uh, remarks. Uh, okay, I'm gonna be short. I just wanted to give thanks to our panelists, uh, all three of them. Danielle already notified me that she will have to go earlier because of another Zoom meeting she had. But uh, I do give huge thanks to Miss Boyan and Miss Alexandra for the great uh, effort uh, giving here for municipality of Tuzi. I hope for future cooperation, especially with NGOs that have a bigger experience in this field, uh, and especially. Big thanks for finding time to be part of this uh, presentation goes to IOM, the international organization. And I hope that the Vlojai Center will give uh, the results in municipality of Tuzi. They can always find a good partner for any positive activities. So greetings from Tuzi once again. I hope to see you live in the next project. Thank you. I'm bye bye to everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.